Hello, good morning, one and all. Welcome back to Optical Communication Video Lectures. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the block diagram of an optical communication system. Your course instructor is Mr. Shivaji, myself. Going forward, by the end of this session, you will be able to understand different blocks that an optical communication system is going to contain. What are the functions of those different blocks that are involved in optical communication system using an optical communication system block diagram? Okay, that is all for that. The general block diagram of an optical communication system shown in this slide, where your information source will be at the first place, or your information source will be the first block. Okay, what are information sources? Information sources are the voice signal or the video signal that we produce. Okay, they contain the information. Hence, those are known as information sources. This information source is transmitted to is transmitted to a modulator. A modulator is a device which is going to perform the effect of modulation on the incoming information signal. This in why we need modulation? We need modulation because our information source is a weak signal. So it cannot be transmitted to long distances easily. So it will be modulated with the help of a carrier signal in order to provide more strength. With if after increasing the strength of the information source signal with the help of modulating signal, that is with the help of your carrier signal, we are going to provide it to transmitting medium. In a general communication system, that means here, if we are discussing about general communication system, that means we are discussing about an electrical communication system. It will be two types, wired and wireless. So your transmission medium can be either wired or wireless. Now, from the transmission medium, your signal will be transmitted into receiver. That means at the end of, at the other end of the transmission medium, you are going to find receiver. In the receiver, we need a demodulator. Demodulator is used for removing the added carrier signal. That means if after removing the carrier signal, we are going to have our pure or original information signal. And this information signal is transmitted to the destination. That means the user at the other end. That is, in general communication system, if we need to transform information from one user to another user, we are going to perform modulation. That is electrical signal is generated and this electrical signal is transmitted either through wired or wireless medium to the receiver. Receiver is going to demodulate. That means it is going to remove the carrier signal and this demodulation will be two types, coherent and non-coherent. Okay. And after removing the carrier signal, original information will be provided to the other user who is the destination. Now let us observe optical communication system. In this slide, you can observe the block diagram of an optical communication system. Here in the first block, we can observe that information source. Okay, information source is similar to that we have seen in the previous slide. Your information source contains any device which can produce voice or video signals or messages which can generate messages. Now this information source is provided to an electrical transmitter. Here a carrier signal will be added in order to change the frequencies or amplitudes in order to provide different modulation. And then this modulator signal will be provided to an optical source. In the next slides you are going to learn about optical sources. Generally your optical sources involve laser diodes and light emitting diodes. Okay. From the optical source, the optical signal is going to be coupled with the optical fiber cable. That means we are inserting your optical source emitting signals into the optical fiber cable. Now this cable is going to transmit that optical signal towards the detector. That means your transmission medium in this case will be your optical fiber cable. And then this information after reaching to the optical detector, optical detector is going to detect all the electrical information signal which is present in the optical form. And then electrical signal will be transmitted to your electrical receiver. Electrical receiver is going to perform the necessary operations in order to separate the information signal. 
and that information signal will be provided to the destination. Okay. Now, message origin. Where do we get the message? Generally, message origin is from a transducer. What is a transducer? A transducer is a device that converts non-electrical message signal into an electrical signal. That means our voice signal is a non-electrical message signal. And a transducer converts this non-electrical message signal into electrical signal. Our pictures or images are a non-electrical message signals. And transducer will convert this non-electrical message signals into electrical signals. After converting into electrical signals, it will be provided to your modulator where we can add carrier signal in order to strengthen the incoming signal. Now, what are the common examples that involve in converting these non-electrical signals into electrical signals? That means, what are the transducers? What are the examples of transducers? Common examples include microphones for converting sound waves into your currents and video cameras for converting images into current. Okay, For data transfer between computers, the message is already in electrical form. When we are transmitting information from one computer to another computer, there is no need of a transducer because the information is already in electrical form. So there is no need to convert it into electrical form again. Okay. Next. In the blown diagram, we have observed that we are using a modulator. What is the purpose of the modulator? Modulator has two main functions. That is, it converts the electrical message into suitable signal for transmission. That means it is going to provide the extra strength that is needed to travel long distance. It impresses the message signal onto the wave generated by the carrier source. That means there will be a carrier source at the modulator and that carrier source is going to provide a high strength signal in that signal, in that carrier signal, your original information will be embedded. That means the carrier signal is modulated according to the parameters of your message signal. Okay, all the parameters of carrier signal will be varied in order to comply with your message signal. Two distinct categories of modulators used are analog modulation and digital modulation. That is, modulators are classified into two types. One is your analog modulation and the other one is digital modulator. Carrier source. In this case, since we are dealing with optical sources, as I said in the earlier slide, we are using two optical sources. They are light emitting diode, abbreviated is LED, and the other diode is laser diode. Okay. And carrier source generates the wave on which the information is transmitted. That means after from the carrier signal travels to the light emitting diode. Now this wave is called the carrier. For fiber optic, a laser diode or a light emitting diode is used. What are the devices that are used in fiber optics to give the strength? Laser diode and light emitting diode. They can be called as optic oscillators. Here they are known as optic oscillators. They provide stable single frequency waves with sufficient power for long distance propagation. Why we need oscillators or modulators to provide signal strength or sufficient power for long distance communication. Okay. Now, channel couplers. Why do we need channel couplers? Once the signal comes out from your sources, light sources, that is LED or laser, it should be transmitted into the fiber properly. So we need couplers. Coupler feeds the power into information channel. What is the information channel that we are using here? Optical fiber cable. For an atmospheric optic system, the channel coupler is a lens. In an atmospheric optic system, the channel coupler is a lens. That is, we are using lens to transmit it light from one side into from the source into the transmitter. That is your transmitting channel. Use it for collimating the light emitted by the source and directing this light towards the receiver. What do you mean by collimating? Collimating is the spreading of the light rays. Okay. The coupler must efficiently transfer the modulated light beam from source to optic fiber. That is, what is the purpose of the coupler? Coupler should couple the light from transmitting source to optic fiber, which is the transmitting medium. It should be very efficient. The channel coupler design is an important part of fiber system because of the possibility of high losses. There is a possibility of very high loss at the coupler because it is the main device that is transmitting your information from transmitter to the transmitting fiber optic cable. That means if there is any info leakage, we are going to lose information here. So it should be very 
important design design should be taken care so that losses are minimized and we are going to see those designs at the unit number 3 okay information channel now after the couple we are going to deal with information channel we are going to understand a bit about information channel what is the channel channel is the path through which your signal will travel from transmitter to receiver or from one end to other the information channel is the path between transmitter and receiver in fiber optic communications a glass or a plastic fiber is the channel what is the channel in fiber optic communication what is the medium that we are using to transmit light waves glass or a plastic fiber we are using to transmit our information from transmitter to receiver in case of optical signals okay desirable characteristics of information channel include low attenuation and large light acceptance cone that means your channel should accept large light area okay your channel should have good aperture so that it will accept whatever light that is coming okay and then it should have a very low attenuation if the attenuation is more you are going to lose information so attenuation should be low next point optical amplifiers boost the power levels of weak signals these optical amplifiers are going to increase the power levels of weak signals so that they can transfer to longer distance amplifiers are needed in very long lengths to provide sufficient power to the receiver if the distance is more what is the link the link is the channel that we are using from transmitter to receiver okay channel is used to link the transmitter with the receiver so we are calling it as a link okay in a long link that means if the distance between the transmitter and the receiver is too high we need power amplifiers to boost the power levels of the peak signals okay another important property of information channel is to is the propagation time of the wave that is traveling along it if the time is more that means if the distance is more then the time for travel is also increasing if the time is more then the signal is going to spread okay whatever signal you are going to have will be going to get spreaded okay this spreading is known as dispersion and we are going to learn about dispersion in your unit number 2 as of now you need to remember that your signal is going to get spreaded okay from a single ray it is going to become dispersed okay this is counted as distortion effect okay a signal propagating along the fiber normally contains a range of optic frequencies there are different optic frequencies as we have seen earlier and divides its power along several ray paths that means since there are different optic frequencies there will be different paths okay this results in a distortion of propagating signal if there is a long distance communication then we will have distortion and we will take look at it how to avoid this distortion in long distance communications in later chapters in a digital system this distortion appears as spreading and deformed of the pulses that means your pulse shape is going to get deformed the spreading is so great that adjacent pulses begin to overlap and become unrecognizable as separate bits of information that means as the spreading increases two adjacent pulses are going to get mingled with one another and you are going to lose the ability to recognize the information okay optical detector once we have from the first slide on what if you remember we have dealt with optical source and then we transmitted it to a modulator then we have given it to an optical source then we have given it to a coupler and from the coupler we have projected it into a channel now from the channel at the other end we are going to have a optical detector what is the optical detector that we are using photo detector optical detector what do you mean by detector detectors are used to identify the signals okay the information being transmitted is detected that means is being identified using a photo detector in the fiber system the optic wave is converted into an electric current by a photo detector what is the purpose of photo detector here it is converting light energy into electrical energy that means it is a transducer which is being used as detector other transducers that are being used as a sources are led and laser diode okay the current developed by the detector is proportional to the power in the incident optic wave whatever wave power that we have given and before the led will be your incident optic wave and here the power is going to the photo detector is going to provide the equal amount of power that is equal to the intensity of the light which is falling on the photo detector detector output current contains the transmitted information now the current that is coming out from the detector is going to contain the information that we have transmitted from the transmitter 
this detector output is then filtered to remove the constant bias and then amplified. We are going to limit the frequencies because there will be some noise frequencies and the process is known as filtering to remove the constant bias and then amplified. Since the information is low signal in amplitude, we are going to amplify the signal power levels so that we can get our desired output. In the process, we are using signal processing. All the techniques that we have employed here are signal processing techniques. What are the signal processing techniques that we have used? One is filtering to remove the noise and the other is amplification because signal, weak, signals are too weak, we are amplifying it so that we can hear them clearly or we can observe them clearly or we can detect them clearly. So signal processing includes filtering and amplification. Proper filtering maximizes the ratio of signal to unwanted power. What is unwanted power here? Noise. So, if we have proper filter, then we can reduce the ratio of signal to noise. Okay, signal to noise ratio will be good. Okay, we are if we are increasing signal to noise ratio, then signal power is more than compared to noise power. And then comes the bit error rate. Since we are transmitting information in the form of bits, we are going to encounter bit error rate. What is bit error rate? It is the ratio of the number of error bits that are being transmitted in a message to the total number of bits that are contained in a message. That means total error bits, how many errors have occurred? Let me say I'm transmitting 10 bits and I have one error bit. Then bit error ratio is error bit, how many number of error bits I have? One divided by how many total number of bits I have? 10. That means here my bit error rate will be 0 0.1, okay? Then coming to the next setting, message output. The electrical form of message emerging from the signal processor that means in the signal processor we have filtered it and then amplified it are transformed into a sound wave or visual image. Whatever the original form is, we are converting that electrical current into that form. Sometimes these signals are directly usable when computers or other machines are connected to a fiber system. If there are computers that are employed, there is no need for transducers because computers will communicate in electrical signals. So there is no need to convert it into audio or video. So computers when computers or other machines are connected to a fiber, we can directly use the electrical signals. Okay. Here, what are the terms that we have come across? Analog data, continuous time and continuous amplitude signal is your analog data. What is digital data? Information in the form of zeros and ones. Okay. Here, we have come across light emitting diodes and the other one is laser diode. Okay. What is bit error rate? It is the number of error bits that we have encountered in a data that is being transmitted. Okay. In the next topic, we are going to learn about advantages and applications. Sorry, advantages and applications of optical communication system. That means, what are the advantages? Why we are going for optical communication system? And where do we use optical communication?